coming to you live from the UTPA Fieldhouse in the three-time All-American city of Edinburgh, Texas. It's University of Texas Pan American Bronx men's basketball. Tonight, the Bronx play their first exhibition game in two years when they face off against the Texas A&M Kingsville Javelinas, a team that the Bronx haven't seen since the Reagan administration. It's been a long time coming between these two clubs. I want to put it in perspective real quick. The Bronx and Javelinas have been playing each other since the Bronx first season of four-year school basketball, 52-53. The Bronx were 1-10 against then Texas A&I before the first cosmonaut went into outer space. Now, during the space race, the Bronx and Javelinas did not play each other, but after Neil Armstrong walked on the moon, the Bronx are 12-3 against Avalinas, but they haven't played each other since 1984. The day before Coach Dan Hipshire's 30th birthday, and he was an assistant at Dayton. Of course, he prefers if you say he was 29. Assistant Coach Ellen McCroy, he was in fifth grade. Associate Head Coach Cody, uh, Andy Hipshire, he was four. Assistant Coach Cody Hopkins was two, and none of the Bronx players have been born yet. It's been a long time coming between these two teams. Kingsville is the closest basketball program, college basketball program of any type to UTPA at an hour and 45 minutes away. So you'd think they would play more often than they have. Why they haven't? Well, that's anybody's guess. I'll, I asked Coach Dan Hipshire about it. Of course, he wasn't here, so he can't give a great answer. But we do talk to him on Bronx pregame. And we're going to... We're running a minute behind, so we're going to skip the commercial break. We'll make it up later, and we will go straight to that interview. Or we won't go to that interview as we're experiencing some technical difficulties with our interviewing apparatus. But basically what Coach Hipster talked about, he talked a little bit about today's game uh, and how, you know, while they, they don't really focus on Texas A&M Kingsville as much as you would an opponent during the regular season, you worry more about yourself and just trying to get the right mix of players out there. Coach Hipster said that they pretty much identified their top ten meaning the guys who are going to play most in rotation. And today they're going to they're going to start five, and then they're going to do a five-for-five five substitution at some point during the first half to get a new unit out there. And they're going to try to get a few other guys a little action as well later on in the game. The Bronx are going to be mostly working on them and game situations. And, you know, Coach Hipsher are very excited to finally be able to play somebody other than themselves, which they've been doing in practice for the last month, well, give or take, a little more than a month. Good evening, uh, as for his feelings, Fieldhouse. this is his first time Welcome stepping on the court as coach. I mean, he's been coaching, but the first the game where he is the head coach Texas of the Bronx, and asked him if he had any butterflies. And uh, University of Texas 
you know, he said not really, but he did admit that it's been a while since he's been a head coach. It's been about 10 years. He had been at Dayton, and then he went on and was an assistant coach at some uh, Power 5 conference schools. But right now we're up against the National Anthem, so let's take a commercial break. When we come back, starting lineups and opening tip, this is Bronx Basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Along with my producer, engineer, Dylan Badura, this is Jonah Goldberg riding with you as we get ready for the start of today's game between the UTPA Bronx and the Texas A&M Kingsville Havelinas. A matchup 31 years in the making, or 29 years in the making. Well, they're going through the starting lineup, so we will do the same, and we will start with the visiting Havelinas. They don't give positions on their roster, so I'll just tell you who they are, and we'll figure out what positions they're playing when they're on the court. Starters, a six-foot, 180-pound junior out of Baltimore, Maryland, number three, Ronald Scott. A six-four, 210-pound senior out of Louisville, Kentucky, number five, Rashad Beasy, or Basie. A six-four, 200-pound senior out of Chicago, Illinois, number 11, Adonis Bailey. A 6'4", 180-pound sophomore out of Bogota, Colombia. Number 12, Thomas Diaz. And a 6'6", 225-pound senior out of Arlington. Number 50, Mike Evans. Head coach of the Avalinas in his 16th season is Pete Peterson, assisted by Brian Duros Jr. and Brandon Martinez. Avalinas last season went 13-13, and 9-9 in the Lone Star Conference. They are of Division II. including a 3-8 record on the road. As for those hosts, UTPA Bronx, starting at the point guard position, a 6'5", 215-pound graduate student out of Woodbridge, Virginia. Number three, Javon Farrell at shooting guard, a 6'1", 185-pound senior out of Lewiston, Florida. Number 30, Hurley Johnson. At small forward, a 6'7", 195-pound sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois. Number 24, Shaquille Hines. The power forward, a 6'5", 218-pound junior out of Kansas City, Missouri. Number 32, Justin Leathers. And at center, a 6'6", 225-pound senior out of Houston. Number 25, Josh Cleveland. The head coach of the Bronx in his first season is Mr. Dan Hipsher. The associate head coach is his son, Andy Hipsher. The assistant coaches are Elwin McCroy and Cody Hopkins. The Bronx last season were 16 and 16, including an 11 and 2 record at home. They were 5 and 3 in the Great West Conference, but that conference no more. The Bronx in the Western Athletic Conference for the first time this season. First exhibition game in two years when the Bronx played Universidad Autonoma de Nuevo Leo. Well, the Bronx 
in their home white tops and bottoms with the green numerals on the front and on the back and orange trim. Green letters spelling out Bronx across the front above the number. A bit of a dope. Bucking Bronx by each knee. Orange, green, and white stripes down the sides of the shorts and by the shoulders as well. A WAC logo on the back above the number. And a Nike swoosh above the BR in Bronx on the front. Havelinas in their road blue tops with the yellow trim. White numbers on the front and on the back with the white word Havelinas on the front in yellow trim. Bronx going right to left. The Havelinas left to right across your computer screen. Bronx with the tip. And we are underway moving to left to right with Javon Farrell, the fifth year transfer from UMass. He's a graduate student, finished up his undergrad degree at Amherst in the A-10 and then came to UTPA for his final season of eligibility and as he goes inside, Farrell fouled. Foul on Ronald Scott and just like that we will get our first free throws of the season. And Farrell hits the first free throw. One, two, three, Farrell's second shot is up and off the back iron. Rebound by Leathers who lays it in. Right place, right time. It's three to nothing Bronx. Ronald Scott runs the point for Texas A&M Kingsville across the timeline. One of many junior college transfers on this Havelinas roster. A lot of juniors and seniors, two sophomores, one freshman. Ball right wing, that's Scott for three, no good. Rebound Hurley Johnson, and back we go the other way. Johnson, his second season with the Bronx, to Shaquille Hines, right wing for three, no good. Rebound, put back attempt, doesn't fall, out of bounds. Last off of Adonis Bailey, it'll remain Bronx basketball. Some cool new features at the UTPA Fieldhouse this season. The, they have new shot clocks this season that are now activated by the referee's whistles. Turnover, steal, Bailey, and here come the Javelinas. Coming in one on two, Basie, who misses on the layup, gets his own rebound, spins around, and lays it in. Nice play, three to two, UTPA. Farrell's got the ball pass to the right wing, Hines. See Hines playing outside the arc a little. He's playing the three position today. Not to say he won't play more four and five later in the season. Coach Hipster telling us this before the game. This is a lineup you would not have seen last season. The Bronx, in effect, playing three forwards. The ball's coming back the other way as Hines plays the three. And you put him out there with Cleveland and with Leathers and that still leaves you Lori Toivonen and Alex Majewski to come off the bench. So in effect, five forwards for three spots. And as long as you have guys who can play multiple position as Josh Cleveland reaches in, that's a pretty good amount of depth. But it also means that if you make a five for five substitution like the Bronx are planning to today, You'll be changing from a big lineup to a smaller lineup, or you'll go with the three-guard set. Basie with the basketball at the top, trying to run past Cleveland, pushes in the back as he moves around to his right, now into the lane, left wing up top. Coming in Diaz, and he loses it, and rolls away. And on the kick ball, the Javelinas will inbound stage left of the basket. 17.49 to play, opening half. Bronx out to a 3-2 lead. And an immediate travel by Bailey. It's Bronx basketball. I like the Bronx new shoes this year. You got this neon green thing going on for a few of them. Neon orange for a couple others. See a green and orange mix as well. They really stand out. Cleveland has it outside, right wing unguarded. Left wing Farrell. The foul line, Hines. Hines puts it up. That's swatted away by Evans. Out of bounds, Bronx basketball. Goes out of bounds, and the Bronx will retain. 
but not before an official's visit to the table. Pretty good crowd out here in this exhibition game Saturday. Fans getting their first look of Bronx basketball. And then on Friday, they'll get their first look, first regular season look at both teams, doubleheader, only doubleheader of the season. Women play at five, men play seven-ish. And the officials want to talk with the table, so in the meantime, the Bronx head over to talk with Coach Hipcher. And Rashad Basie will go over to talk with assistant coach Brian DeRoche Jr. Well, now we're ready to go. UTPA pep band here and awesome as always. Javon Farrell goes up and under. No. Rebound. Basie. Back we go the other way. Alley oop. Attempt. That's not going in. Cleveland gets the board. Farrell's got a right wing. Lobs it into Leathers. Doubled. Out to the top. Farrell for three. No good. Rebound by Cleveland, who gets fouled over the back. Cleveland's going to be heading to the line for two free throws. Bronx up three to two. Effectively got their first three points from the line as Farrell hit the first shot. The second shot was no good, but a rebound and a putback by Leathers. I gave the Bronx their three. That was a while ago. Now Cleveland goes to the line. And the first one is nothing but net. That is something that Cleveland definitely working on. Putting a lot of time on his free throws. It was at 36% last season. Mike Evans takes his seat. Or Texas A&M Kingsville. Scott brings it down. Pass goes into the left corner to Diaz, who misses on the three. Farrell tried for the rebound. Now Hines has it. A little tie-up underneath, and here come the Bronx in transition. Farrell goes underneath the Leathers, who gets blocked from behind. And here come the Javelinas pushing it up the court. That's Scott. Pass off to 14. There's no 14 on my roster. Call an illegal screen. Okay, R. Powell is number 14. According to our live stats, try to get his first name at some point. I think they announced Ryan over the PA. Offensive foul, it's Bronx basketball. Powell is the one who replaced Evans on that substitution earlier. Well, we are up against our first media timeout, so we will take one as well. 15.58 to play, Bronx by three in the first. This is Bronx Basketball. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Well, 
Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. 15.58 to play in the opening half, and it's 5-2 Bronx. Neither team off to a great shooting start. Both teams 1 for 7 from the floor and 0 for 2 from behind the arc. The Bronx, 3 of their points from the line. Same five out there for UTPA. Going towards the rim is Hines. He gets fouled. and Hines will be the third Bronx to the foul line today. From the line that last season, Hines was a 52% free throw shooter, 16 for 31. So not a lot of opportunities there. But that's big for a guy like him. I figure he's going to be the target of a hack -a shack now and then. He misses on the first. Bronx as a team last year were 64% from the line. Hines hits the second, the Bronx lead 6-2. Scott running the offense for the Javelinas. Scott left wing, pass up top. That's Diaz for three off the front iron. Hines grabs the rebound and back we go the other way. Hines waits back for his teammates, didn't have numbers, dumps it into Cleveland, high block. Out to the top of the key, Leathers, left wing, Hurley Johnson. Johnson up top, Hines, he's alone, 4-3, got it! Shaquille Hines from downtown. And the Bronx out to a 9-2 lead. Hines last season was 4 for 10 from behind the arc. Saw him do that during the exhibition game and you kind of wonder if this is going to be something we see from him more as we go as the season goes along Cleveland misses on the basket here come the Javelinas Scott pass off left wing Bailey comes into the corner that's Basie back to Bailey right elbow Basie knocks it down it's a little scoring drop for the Javelinas, and it's 9-4. to four. Farrell at the top. Pass over to left wing. Leathers for three. In and out. Rebound by Bailey. Here comes Scott all the way to the rim. Dumps it off, and Garcia good in the foul. Back to back. Okay, that did go in. I was waiting for the scoreboard to update. Dylan was wondering, just like me, did, <laughs> did we miss that? <laughs> One thing I've learned, always trust your instincts. If you saw it go in, it did go in, no matter what the scoreboard says. Of course, Dylan was a baseball player here, so he knows what that's like when, when the count is up on the board. If you know you've thrown two strikes, there are two strikes. Free throw good, Bronx lead was seven, now three. Five for five substitution for the Bronx before that free throw, Shaquille Boga misses there. It's Boga, Jamal Dantzler, Blake Provost, seeing his first action as a Bronx after redshirting his freshman year. Alex Majewski, Lori Toivinen as well. Toivinen goes by Latte. Don't be surprised if we call him that every now and then. Dantzler grabs the rebound. Dantzler playing the three, Boga the one, Provost the two. Majewski tries a three from the left corner. He gets blocked. It goes out of bounds for the Bronx to retain with 13.29 on the clock and the Bronx up 9-6. Number four, Ryan Garcia and number 50, Mike Evans. Toivonen playing the five, Majewski playing the four. So we start to get an idea of how the Bronx are going to play their regular rotations as you see who's who at each spot as Toivonen tries a three from the top and hits off the back iron over the top of the backboard and out of bounds. It is Avelina's basketball and you know what? Avelina's are 0 for 3 from behind the arc today but if they make that 1 for 4 here they can tie this game. Powell past the top Scott 
Scott pass over to the left wing. There's a three in the way, and that's Basie who ties the game up at nine. 7-0 run, Texas A&M Kingsville. And the Bronx already getting ready to make a substitution as LJ McIntosh heads to the scorer's table. Dantzler looked like it was on his way in. And offensive foul on number 21. And they call it offensive foul on Toivonen. His first five on the Bronx by way of comparison for the Havelinas. And Kingsville gets the ball and the with a basket, two. they can take their first lead of the game. LJ McIntosh is in. Shaquille Boga takes a seat. Provost may run the point in this situation. Could be McIntosh as well. We'll wait and see. That's two quick ones on Toivonen now. He's got two. 12.33 left in the first half. Already with two fouls. And we'll have to wait and see how long Toivonen gets to stay in this game. Of course, in an exhibition, is the miss by Bailey, the rebound provost. Oh, shot clock didn't start. So the referees all play to go over to the table and fix the shot clock. You can leave somebody out there with two fouls in the first half and see how he reacts. I mean, that's one thing you can do in an exhibition that you may or may not do in a regular season game. You only get five. But, I mean, if you can see, well, how does a guy play with two fouls in the first half? Will he become more tentative because he's afraid of getting that third foul? Will he play normally? Will he pick up that third foul? Okay, they're going to the instant replay. This is also new for this season. They're going to the instant replay that's across from us. So over uh, by the scores table or they can take a look at the shot clock and the game clock and see how much time should be on the shot clock. I, I would guess two seconds, maybe three have come off at this point. Last year, I guess they would have just estimated. You know, it's funny. Uh, my previous job, I, I used to work in the D League. and Whenever there was a, uh, there was a clock issue, they, they didn't go to replay. They... They would just say, oh, no, change the clock to this if the clock hadn't started. And I always wondered, how do they know? I mean, I guess they look at the clock right before the play starts. And then if it doesn't, and then they look up and they see it hasn't started, they can just subtract. But there would be times when it would be like tenths of a second, you know, towards the end of a quarter. I mean, I don't know if they kept track with a, a personal stopwatch in a pocket or something, but... Coach Hipsher just got teed up. For what? He was talking with one of the officials while they were looking over the clock. And Hipsher just had this look of surprise on his face. He's asking one of the officials, what did I do? And he's being told to go back to the bench. So technical free throws for Ronald Scott. He hit the first. Second is off the front iron. Doesn't matter because it's, you know what? That's a lead for the Havelinas. This is their first of the game. It's 10-9. It's an 8-0 run. Now Coach Hipsher wants to speak to one of the other officials. Perhaps he's the one who called the technical. I'm not entirely sure who called it, but asking what it was, and the official simply beckons him to sit down. And I'm not sure what the issue was. But I tell you, I'd love to ask Coach Hipsher about that during our post-game interview today. Make sure you stay tuned for that. I, I, I don't know what kind of answer we'll get. So, we'll see. If we don't talk about it, I'll certainly find out before Friday's broadcast, and we'll talk about it during the pregame or during the game. Jamal Dantzler called with a foul. His first. That's already eight on UTPA. Twice as many as Texas A&M Kingsville. At the line for the 
Now Coach Hipscher is speaking to one of the officials again. Huh. Curiosity. That is for sure. Well, here comes Dantzler to the hoop, and he gets fouled going up for a basket. So dantzler has got two coming up when we return. 11 minutes, 53 seconds to play in the opening half. The Bronx Trail, 10 to 9. You're watching Bronx Basketball. Part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. I had some project. That's a lot Call Dr. Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. I want you to come see us today at your new Buick GMC dealer, South Texas Buick GMC. Come test drive the all-new 2014 GMC Sierra and drive it home for just $3.99 a month. South Texas being GMC. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. 11.53 to play in the opening half. The Bronx trailing 10 to 9. Jamal Dantzler at the line for a couple of free throws. That's where the Bronx have made their living today as he hits the first, ties it up at 10. Dantzler was at 39% for the line last season. Now he hits them both here. The Bronx, 6 for 8 from the foul line today, which offsets their 2 for 15 shooting from the field. Havelin is not all that much better. They're 4 for 13. First game of the season for both teams. Exhibition. Bronx get the ball right back. And Dantzler pass over to the right wing. McIntosh for 3. No good. Rebound is controlled by Kingsville. And back we go the other way. For the pass, Toivonen goes down. Scott, but I think that's going to be a blocking foul on Toivonen. It is. So Toivonen now three fouls in the first half. And that's going to bring Christian Hildebrandt into the game. Now Hildebrandt's a guard, but he's a tall guard. You know, he's listed at 6'4". I think he's actually a little taller than that. He is replacing Toivonen as they pass each other. Toivonen's definitely taller, but Toivonen 6'7. Hildebrand, he looks more like he might be 6'5 or even 6'6. Second shot, no good. So we're tied at 11 with 11 and a half to play. Blake Provost running the offense. The brother of Brandon Provost recently graduated as Alex Majewski nails a three. And the Bronx lead 14-11. Scott runs the offense. Scott gets past Majewski, past right corner. There's an open look for Bailey who drains the three, ties it at 14. Second time the Avalinas have hit a three to tie the game. Provost, pass left wing, Majewski. Majewski was the winner of the three-point shootout at Bronx Madness. Uh, a turnover, Avelina's ball. Six 
Scott. Comes underneath. That's Powell gets fouled. Powell heads to the line for two free throws. In and out. A line change for the Bronx. The starting five of Leathers, Hines, Johnson, Cleveland, and Farrell back in. Or, well, wait a minute. They not allowed Cleveland in yet? Because they haven't, there's only four players out there. Oh, no, nope, now they are. Now Shaquille Bogus getting ready to check in. No good on the free throws, 14-14. Now uh, whistle. Foul on number five, Rashad Basie. Rashad Basie gets called for a foul. Boga in, Cleveland out. Avelina's make a sub as well. Thomas Diaz back in. Powell takes the seat. And now Bogo run the offense. He wasn't out there long with uh, the second grouping earlier. Sparrow misses on the three. Rebound pulled down by Scott. Got a lot of instruction on the bench after he came out. We'll see what happens this time around. Tipped away and out of bounds to remain Havelina's ball with 25 on the shot clock. Make sure you stay tuned for Bronx at the half. We're going to show you a clip of Bronx Country, the Bronx new regionally televised TV show. We'll show you the first segment, which centers around basketball. Take a look at Bronx Madness. You'll get a look at the Bronx preparation for this game. The Bronx inaugural tip-off luncheon. Spirit Week as well. Five on the shot clock, four. There's the three up in the air by Scott. No good. Hines. The rebound, here come the Bronx. Three on three. And it's coming back the other way. Justin Leathers called for an offensive foul. Or not. It would have made sense for it to be on Hines. I see a foul on Boga up on the board. Well, whoever was on, rather immaterial. It's Avelina's ball. That's really the only thing that matters. Bailey finds Ryan Garcia, who trolls the baseline for a bucket just before the buzzer. And it's 16-14, Havelinas. Boga. Left wing Leathers. Pass out to Johnson. Now the right wing Boga from the Kingsville bench. Takes a step in, gets doubled in the corner. Goes inside to Leathers. Leathers turns around, feeds Farrell at the top. Right wing Hines for three. Yes! Shaquille three. Hines for downtown, and the Bronx take the lead back at 17-16. Eight and a half to play in the first. Ball. Looks like some moisture on the floor where that player just fell down, so they're going to quickly wipe that up. In the meantime, Jacob Popovich into the game for the first time. He replaces Hurley Johnson. The Bronx have now used 12 players so far. They've got 16. Well, actually, 14 in uniform tonight. And the only two in uniform who haven't played yet. 
be Marcel Simon. And strong on the ground. Jump ball situation. Possession our favors the Avelinas. But it was already their ball, so that's great for the Bronx because the next one will be for UTPA. We haven't seen Simon, and we have not seen. Actually, maybe we have seen everybody. Double check that in a minute. Yeah, I think it's just Marcel Simon. I think we've actually seen 13 of the 14 thus far. The Bronx doing a good job getting everybody in in this exhibition. First free throw good for Garcia. Evans and Scott take a seat. Robert Powell and Robert Eladu are in for the Javelinas. Eighteen seventeen, Kingsville. Just under eight minutes to play in the first. Leathers at the top. And this one's coming the other way when we return. 7.55 to play in the first. Bronx trailing 18-17. You're watching Bronx Basketball. brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Penn and Intercollegiate Athletics. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. John Goldberg riding with you. 7.50 to play in the first. Bronx down 18-17. Well, now I know who I was missing. Maurice McDonald, number 11, is into the game. The McAllen native. Went to IMG Academy. Eladu, Bailey, Scott, uh, Farrell feeds McDonald, misses, rebound Pell. Traveling violation, the Bronx get the ball back with seven minutes to play in the first. Down 18-17. Boga coming in, lays it up, round and out. Rebound, put back Leathers, no. Rebound pulled in by Bailey. Here come the Avalinas with Elidu. Hands off to Garcia, and out of the top, Powell. Left wing, Bailey. Trapped in front of the Bronx bench. Pass out to half court. Just saved it from a backcourt violation. And 
Avelina's call for a 30 second timeout. So let's uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back. I want you to come see us today at your new Buick GMC dealer, South Texas Buick GMC. Come test drive the all-new 2014 GMC Sierra and drive it home for just $3.99 a month. South Texas being GMC. Welcome back out to the UTPA field now. Six and a half minutes to play, opening half, 18-17. Avelinas with the lead. And the ball. Bronx Five are Shaq Boga, Mo McDonald, Shaq Hines, Justin Leathers, Javon Farrell. Garcia lets it fly, no good. Rebound, Boga. Here come the Bronx. Boga, McDonald. Back to Boga, there's Hines. Comes underneath, goes up and under for the layup. And the Bronx take the lead back, it's 19-18. Hines. Got fouled. That would have been a nice putback slam for Farrell, who looked like he wanted to take the basket down with him. Personal foul on number 10, Dwight Taylor. At the line, number 24, Shaquille Hines. Keel Hines at the line, hits the first one. I'd like to say hello to Ryan Buck, former Bronx basketball player tuning in, class of 2008. Currently working out in California, but a native of Harlingen just down the road from here. Hines' second free throw is good. Hines three for four from the line today. The Bronx with a three-point advantage. Buck sending a tweet at UTPA Bronx. Uh, and also to my personal Twitter at Jonah UTPA. Shameless plug. Bronx, well, Bronx well over the limit. They've been over the limit for five or six minutes. So that means free throws for the Havalinas as Ronald Scott misses on the first. Havalinas four for 11 from the line today. Marcel Simon, just heard his name, he's in. 21-19 now. The well, Bronx have gotten all of their uniformed personnel into this game in the first 14 and a half minutes. Traveling. Hines called for a travel. Scott, pass tipped, but it makes its way out to Bailey. Check that, Diaz. Now comes back to Scott. Dancer all over him. Comes over to the left wing, Taylor. Scott goes corner, that's Garcia. Five on the shot clock. Four, three, two, one. And that is a shot clock violation, sir. Bronx basketball. You know, it, it's funny because on the last couple times the shot clock got low, you, you could hear the, some of the UTPA fans screaming out the numbers, of course, earlier. So they'd hit one about five seconds left on the clock to try and force up a shot. And it didn't 
and that time they did it. As Boga knifes his way into the lane and comes up with the layup. Bronx up four, 23-19. Well, the Javelinas answer right back. So that time they didn't chant. And the Javelinas lost track of the shot clock. Funny how that works. Dantzler fouled on the floor. Of course, that's that should be eight on Texas A&M Kingsville. Now it is, so that's a one and one coming up. Thomas Diaz with two. Jamal Dantzler to the line. Uh, first one, no good. Dantzler, 39% from the line last season. Bronx are 8 for 11 from the line today. And have a two-point advantage. It's 23-21. 4-14 to go, opening half. Scott, pass over to the left wing, Diaz. Back to Scott, now to the right wing. Garcia for three, no good. Rebound tipped out of bounds. Off of Kingsville, Bronx ball when we return. 3.53 to play in the opening half in the Bronx. Up to a 23-21 lead. This is Bronx basketball. A team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Tell me, Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletic. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. 348, 347, 346 left in the first, and the Bronx out to a 23-21 lead. Hines along the baseline. Pass is tipped. And coming the other way is Kingsville with Scott. His shot blocked. Rebound attempt, nothing. Rebound Farrell, and here comes UTPA. Farrell racing in himself, draws the contact, he puts up a shot, and he bangs into the padding below the basket. Back on his feet and ready to go shoot some free throws. The Bronx has been busy there today. Eight for 11 from the line. Farrell one for two. He was the first free throw shooter of the day. It was a while ago, actually. Twenty-four, twenty-one. Twenty-five, twenty-one. Bronx lead back to two possessions. Farrell takes a seat. L.J. McIntosh back in. It's McIntosh, Dantzler, Hines, Majewski, and Boga. 
So two returners, three newcomers. A lot of newcomers on the Bronx this season. But it was four returners starting today, along with one newcomer. So Chipshire has done a nice job of mixing and matching these players today. Really a great chance to see what he has. I mean, you can you can see in practice, but when everybody knows what's coming. And it's better to play against other people when you can. Coach Hipster is saying he wishes he could have had two exhibition games. Scheduled in workout as well as he would have liked this year. Not always easy to schedule those exhibitions. They're a good thing to have. Ryan, uh, Robert Powell back in for the Javelinas. Mike Evans with two fouls takes a seat. 2.39 to play in the first. That's interesting. The Javelinas are using pictures to call out their plays. Wh which football team is doing that? Is that, is that Oregon? Or somebody is doing that too. It looked like a, a horse with a couple of letters. I couldn't see the letters. Boga. Brings it down for the Bronx. Right wing Majewski. Baseline, Hines, jumper, swish. 27-21. UTPA. Andy Hipscher to his feet. Gives some instructions. McIntosh all over Bailey. Pass comes to Scott. Now back to Bailey. Inside Diaz. Back out Scott. 12 on the shot clock. Baseline, Powell, jumper, no. Rebound, Hines. Hands it off to Boga. From one shack to the other. Left corner, Majewski, wide open. Three, no good. A rebound. Pulled in by the Javelinas. Scott to Bailey. Top to Garcia. Right wing, Scott. Bailey looks for Majewski. Or, well, he doesn't look for Majewski. So Majewski steals it in high. With a three-point play opportunity coming up. Bailey called for the foul. And Hines is shooting the free throws by his lonesome. <laughs> Not the layup, the assist by Boga. Hines gets another one. That hits off the back iron. It was ruled an intentional foul. Which is why Hines got two free throws and the Bronx get to keep the ball. A 30 to 21 UTPA with a minute 13 to go in the opening half. Another miss by Kingsville, a rebound Dantzler. Long pass up the court, gets batted out of bounds. Who's it off of? It's off the Bronx, Havelina's basketball. Scott feeds Garcia, now over to Bailey. Right wing Scott, left side Bailey, this is Garcia, right wing Scott, Bailey, comes inside, throws it up, no good, swatted away, out of bounds remains Havelina's basketball, 29.6 on the game clock, 7 on the shot clock.
On the inbounds, they tried to tip it in. It doesn't fall. Rebound, Hines. Heads to McIntosh. Back to Hines. Feeds Dance underneath. Lays it up and in. 32-21, Bronx. Shot clock off, and Texas A&M Kingsville can hold out for the last shot of the half. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. No good. We go into the half, and the Bronx with an 11-point advantage. The Bronx are led by Shaquille Hines. He's got 16 points already. Five of eight shooting, two of four from behind the arc, four for six from the line, six rebounds. Well, on his way to a double bubble. After that, Farrell's got three, Dantzler four, Majewski three, Boga two, Leathers two, Cleveland two. Two steals for Leathers. As for the Havelinas, seven points for Basie, four for Garcia, five for Scott, three for Bailey, two for Powell. Three assists for Scott. Six rebounds for Bailey. Five for Powell. The Bronx are shooting 31% from the field. They're 9 for 29. Kingsville, 23%, 7 for 30. Bronx, 3 for 12 from behind the arc. Kingsville, 2 for 10. Bronx, 11 for 15 from the line. Kingsville's 5 for 12. In terms of rebounds, Bronx with 28, Kingsville with 20. There have been three lead changes and five ties. We'll give you all these numbers. Let's take one of those but the only ones that matter, 32 to 21. The UTPA Bronx lead the Texas A&M Kingsville Javelinas at the half. Well, UTPA recently launched a regionally televised TV show. It's called Bronx Country. It airs Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. Fridays at 11 a.m. on Comcast Sportsnet Houston. Throughout the week on McAllen Cable Network, Far Television, 956sports.com, and on the Bro UTPA Bronx YouTube channel as well. So it's everywhere to be seen, and right now we're going to show you a clip from this week's episode of Bronx Country. UTPA men's basketball getting ready for an exhibition game on Saturday. We'll check in with them. The entire UTPA campus caught up in Spirit Week, and we'll take a look at how UTPA women's basketball is supporting the troops. This is Brown Country. Welcome to Bronx Country. I'm Jonah Goldberg. The countdown to tip off on the UTPA Bronx Instagram account now stands at just one week. And the University of Texas Pan American men's basketball team takes the court for the first time on Saturday at 7 when they host Texas A&M Kingsville in an exhibition game. Marianne Garcia has more. Our kids work hard every night and represent the school. I mean, new team, new coach. New drills, new system, and new plays all leading up to the start of UTPA's men's basketball 2013-2014 new season. We're very close to having our whole defensive package in and then trying to refine some things on the offensive end. Bronx won't intimidate easily. Not intimidating at all. It's definitely a motivational standpoint. You know, the change and all that. Everybody wants to come play and show this coach that we can handle the pressure. Uh, I'm excited for that, man. I've been waiting for this day to come. I'm just waiting for the, just the season to start. When that ball goes there, if it does go there, you got to go with it right away. Uh. This year, the Bronx will be competing in a new conference, the Western Athletic Conference, or WAC, a change that brings new challenges and opportunities. Great opportunity. 
final four out of the WAC. Uh, so great competition and uh, an opportunity to then play for championships. To earn a spot in that championship will take more than hard work. It will also take leadership. Excited for the competition. Try to see what the team is going to bring. You know, a lot of new guys, uh, us as seniors, we got to step up and lead the team. The seniors, along with the entire team, respect and are ready to play under Hipshire's new systems. This year, he, this coach knows what he wants, and if you're not going to give it to him, you won't play. <laughs>
as nearly 200 people packed the inaugural UTPA basketball tip-off luncheon last week to get the first words on the season from coaches Hipsher and Tidwell. Raquel Gonzalez has more. The athletic department organized this event to provide knowledge about the basketball program to the community and to thank them for their endless support and It's very exciting for the athletic department for the university. Uh, you know, we hired uh, Coach Titwell and Coach Hipsher last April. It's sort of what we call the new era of Bronc athletics. And uh, to do a first ever tip-off luncheon, to introduce the coaches to the community, have the coaches introduce themselves, the team, the upcoming season. Um, you know, I just think it's, it's great for you know, the entire Rio Grande Valley and, and trying to get more support for the basketball programs. As we get this done, it's going to take the people of the valley, the people of Edinburgh, McAllen, Harlingen, and the entire valley. The powerhouse double team of Coach Larry Tidwell and Coach Dan Hipsher, along with the support of the community, Bronx basketball is ready for tip-off. It's an exciting time of the year for us. We're practicing, getting ready every day. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a time to tip people off that, hey, it's about here. For Bronx Country, I am Raquel Gonzalez. On campus, it was Spirit Week at UTPA. It was like a week-long pep rally. Elizabeth Espinoza has the story. Serving as a kickoff to Bronx basketball season, hosted Spirit Week. Bronx from all over UTPA came together and showed their school spirit throughout events on campus, starting with Bronx Bash. Clubs and organizations came to show their school pride and bonded through games of the night. Following Bronx Bash was the annual tailgate party where the Bronx painted the town green and white. And my favorite part of like the whole semester is Spirit Week because um, these are sort of the sort of events that bring the students together um, to increase the school spirit. This whole week is an opportunity for students to get together and experience other and experience that school spirit. games, rides, and music. Students put their grilling skills to the test and also participated in a food eating contest. It's, it means a lot that students are actually coming out here and showing spirit. A lot of students from different organizations and meeting like with student government and with the UPV. It's great because they're meeting us, we're meeting them and that unites us in a very strong way. And keeping the Bronx spirit alive and well is what the entire UTP community is dedicated to. Since I came here, every part of what we're doing and tonight just demonstrates that it's working people are really involved and we've got our littlest Bronx down here involved everybody's here tonight it's about building spirit about caring about the university Bronx cheerleaders pumped everybody up for the traditional burning of the UTPA letters the spirit week showcased what it means to be a Bronx countless laughs and unforgettable memories were shared most importantly, Bronx came together and became a part of Spirit Week built up to quite an exclamation point with a packed field house for Bronx Madness on Friday. The festivities included a dance competition won by the Filipino Student Association. UTPA student athletes also took part, dressing up like zombies and getting down to Thriller. Now we already showed you the scrimmages, but that's just one part of the basketball fans got to see. There was also a dunk contest featuring Josh Cleveland, Justin Daniel, and Shaquille Hines. Hines, the winner there. Then there was a battle of the sexes three-point shootout. In the first matchup, Alex Majewski edged Laquita Garner. The second matchup needed a tiebreaker as Alexandria Hill and Hurley Johnson each hit eight three-pointers in 30 seconds. Over the next 30 seconds, Hill hit seven more to advance to the finals. Majewski ended up winning in the finals, but Hill effectively hit 19 three-pointers in a Last week, we told you about the UTPA volleyball team's Hawaiian punch. Coming up on this week's edition of Bronx Country, we take a look at the Bronx Texas 10. Here comes Reynolds. Yes!
brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We, are we will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Welcome back out to the UTPA field. I hope you enjoyed that look at Bronx Country, the Bronx regionally televised television show. If you want to see the rest of the episode, go to utpabronx.com and click on Bronx Country in the upper right-hand corner. That whistle is loud. Tells you how close they were to us when they blew it. Well, they switch sides of the court. The Bronx moving left to right. The Havelinas from right to left. And Mike Evans quick quickly picks up foul number three. Justin Leathers hits on the first. Free throws have been a story for UTPA today. Bronx now 12 for 16 from the line. 13 for 17. Maha out of free throws. And just like that, Leathers picks up his first foul. And there's been a lot of fouls today, and overall. Let's see if I can get the exact numbers. And there have been 25 fouls so far. Rashad Basie picks up the bucket. And the Bronx lead is cut to 11. Farrell with the basketball for UTPA spins his way into the lane and comes up with the layup. First basket since the opening minute of the first half. And Farrell gives the Bronx a 13 point lead. Basic. Trying to get around Johnson can, so stops and pops and swishes it in. And the Bronx lead cut to 11. Hines with the basketball right wing. Bounces it into Cleveland. Back out to Hines. Back to Cleveland. Turns around, throws it up. No good, but a foul. More free throws. Cleveland a perfect two for two from the line today. The free throws are the difference in the game. The Bronx have eight more points off free throws than Kingsville. And if you equalize that, then the Rocks still have the lead, but it's a tight game. Cleveland off the back iron. <laughs> Lots of student athletes in attendance today, despite the fact that it's a very busy weekend for Bronx Athletics. Women's tennis is up at Sam Houston State right now. Cross country competed in the WAC Championships in Seattle today. First time the Bronx have competed in a WAC Championship level ball event. Two of the men's runners finished in the top 10. They're headed to the NCAA South Central Regionals next weekend, or two weekends from now. A travel Bronx basketball. Women's golf in action tomorrow and Monday over on South Padre Island. 
Now that is a nice place to play golf. Cleveland off the rim. Goes out, remains Bronx ball. Volleyball's on the road. They play in about 45 minutes up at Idaho. A critical whack contest. Johnson at the foul line, hopping his way in. No good. Rebound, Kingsville. And Diaz waits back for his teammates. He did not have numbers. Scott underneath goes left corner. Bailey for three, no good. Rebound, looked like Powell, and it just hops around. And I think Diaz just got smacked in the nose. He's wincing and he points to the bench. Diaz goes back to the bench and he's still holding his eyes kind of closed like when you're in when you're in pain and Hopefully you know what I'm talking about as I'm doing a terrible job of describing it. But, <laughs> you know, you kind of squint your eyes. I've done it. But he went back to the bench and Coach Peterson just put his palms up. And remaining in the game is Diaz. Thirty nine twenty five Bronx, seventeen and a half minutes to play. Basie's got the ball. That's the right corner, Diaz. Diaz, the left wing, Powell launches a three, no good. And on the rebound by Leathers, a foul call. Well, that's four now on Kingsville, three on Diaz. <laughs> Farrell, right wing, finds Hines, baseline jumper, no good. Rebound Cleveland, doesn't get it in, but he gets fouled, and Cleveland's headed to the line. Cleveland's three for four from the line today. The Bronx are 16 for 21. That's 76%. First shot good. It's a 15 point Bronx advantage. You know, it's funny, you look back, this was a close game really not that long ago. The Bronx were down 18-17. Since that point, it's, if you want to call it a 23-7 now, run. Over the last 11 minutes and four seconds. Foul, Harley Johnson's headed to the line. Scott's got two, that's six already on Kingsville in the first three minutes of this half. By way of comparison, the Bronx have won. Johnson hits the free throw. It's a 16-point advantage, 24-7 run. If you want to be able to see the runs the same way I can, go check out. If you're watching the live stats, you can look at the play-by-play. -play, but if you go into the URL and you type in slash media at the end, you'll get the media view of the live stats. They're not as pretty, but I think they're more functional. So I use those. During this 24-7 run, the Bronx 6 for 11 from the field, 12 for 16 from the line. Kingsville 3 for 18 from the field, 1 for 2 from the line. That says it all. Scott buries the 3. And... 
timeout called. Extends it to immediate timeout, so we'll take one as well. 16 and a half minutes to play. Bronx by 14. This is Bronx Basketball. <laughs> you to come see us today at your new Buick GMC dealer, South Texas Buick GMC. Come test drive the all new 2014 GMC Sierra and drive it home for just $3.99 a month. South Texas Buick GMC. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you 16 and a half minutes up on the clock. Bronx up 42-28 after our unscheduled media timeout. And it's Bronx basketball moving left to right. Blake Provost is into the game off the timeout. The Bronx did not go five for five like they did in the first half. In fact, Provost is the only substitution. So he replaces Javon Farrell. Provost has got some good minutes here during this exhibition game. Johnson right wing, top of the key, Hines, left wing, Provost. Down low to Leathers, misses on the layup. Ball goes flying out of bounds, and now we hit our regularly scheduled media timeout, so we'll step aside again. 15.59 to go, same score, Bronx by 14. This is Bronx basketball. Here. We understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital at Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. I want you to come. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Along with my producer engineer extraordinaire, the one and only Dylan Badura. This is Jonah Goldberg riding with you. Under 16 minutes to go. Bronx by now 16 points. Josh Cleveland goes hook. 44-28. Three left wing, Thomas Diaz. Bronx lead cuts to 13. Bronx keep the same lineup of Provost Johnson. Hines, Leathers, Cleveland. Scott, Basie, Bailey, Diaz, Powell for the Javelinas. Leathers, layup, it's good. 46-31, you know, one thing I noticed is when Mike Evans isn't on the court, the inside for Kingsville is a lot less protected. Evans with four fouls, that's why he's not out there. Remember when he was out there in the first half? Block shots, galore. Very physical player. But that also leads to more fouls sometimes. And without him, the Bronx have a much easier time of getting to the rim. Personal foul on number 25, Josh 
Cleveland is fourth. Team second. So four fouls now on Josh Cleveland. He stays out there though. Bronx make a couple subs. Shaquille Hines and Hurley Johnson take a seat. Shaq Boga is in. Along with Jamal Dantzler. Bronx trying different combinations. Boga left wing. Provost to the top, so two of the three guys who have seen the most time of point guard today out there. Cleveland goes down low to Dantzler, who's blocked from behind. And here come the Havilinas. Ball comes to the left wing. BC, or Basie for three, he hits it. Bronx lead cut to 10. 14 minutes to play. Looks like somebody brought a trumpet to the game. That didn't come from the pep band. That came from behind us. Leathers along the baseline, throws it up, no good. Cleveland the board and not a bucket. Texas A&M Kingsville the rebound. Basie, whistle before the shot. The Bronx pick up their third foul of this half. Havelina's picked up six fouls in the first three minutes. None in the last three. And Josh Cleveland just fouled out of the game. Cleveland. Check that. Well, no, no, no. The foul was on Shaquille Boga. So Cleveland has not fouled out. Still has four. Boga's first foul. Alex Majewski just picked up his first foul. Two quick fouls on UTPA and a tip in now for Powell. Bronx lead has been cut to eight. And the Bronx want a timeout, a 30 second timeout. So let's step aside and hear some words from South Texas GMC. We'll be right back. I want you to come see us today at your new Buick GMC dealer, South Texas Buick GMC. Come test drive the all-new 2014 GMC Sierra and drive it home for just $3.99 a month. South Texas being GMC. The Bronx led this game 42 to 25. It was a 17-point advantage. Since then, the Bronx outscored 13-4. That's over the last three and a half minutes. And now the Havelinas with an eight. Off a of timeout, Alex Majewski gets the lead back into double figures. Basie. Pass, intercepted, Majewski, head to Provost, lays it up, and in! 50 to 38, back-to-back -back baskets, UTPA. Snaps what had been a 7-0 run. Another miss for the Havelinas, another rebound for the Bronx. Danzler, Bronx have numbers, five on four, Provost. Dumps it off to Majewski, puts it up, no good, but a foul. And the Bronx are heading back to the line. Bronx 19 for 25 from the line today, that's 76%. That's 14 more free throws and 10 more attempts than the Havelinas. Majewski's first shot bounces off the back of the rim and doesn't fall. Laurie Toivon in back in. He replaces Justin Leathers. Blake Provost takes a seat as LJ McIntosh is in for the Bronx. Adonis Bailey takes a seat for the Havelinas. So 
see who came in. I think it's Ryan Garcia. Majewski's second shot is good. Bronx lead up to 13. Bronx putting on a little pressure, 2-2-1. Scott up to Powell, back to Scott. Spins away from Boga. 22 on the shot clock. Right wing, Basie. Garcia. Right wing, Scott. Powell. Comes outside to Scott. Now left wing, Basie. Nails the three, and the Bronx lead cut back to 10. Toivon in underneath. Gets past his defender and puts it in. He was ready to shoot, so the defender coming in, so held on to the ball, did a little spin move, and then just put it up and over his shoulder. Bronx lead is 12. Foul on the floor. And we hit immediate timeout. 11-21 to play, 53-41 Bronx. This is Bronx Basketball. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Bronx Country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Shona Goldberg riding with you. We have 11.21 on the clock. And the Bronx out to a 12-point lead. Long inbounds for the Javelinas who have brought Mike Evans back into the game with four fouls. But they need him on defense. Evans trapped in the corner. Pass to Basie. Now comes up to the top to Scott to the left wing. Garcia. Back to Basie. Passes it out, looking for Powell, stole by McIntosh. Right side, Boga, right corner, Majewski all alone for three, but it's no good. Rebound goes out of bounds. And it's... It's Havelina's ball? Coach Hipsher disagrees with that. Garcia, Scott, left wing jumpers, good. And the Bronx lead just cut to 10. Boga, McIntosh. Majewski, got it. 55-43. Look what I've seen from Majewski today. He's got eight points, three of six shooting, three rebounds. Second on the Bronx and scoring behind Shaquille Hines, who's got 16. Speaking of Hines, he's back in along with Javon Farrell. They replaced Jamal Dantzler and Shaquille Boga. You know, last year, 
Hines was one of just 11 players in all of NCAA Division I with the first name Shaq. Well, now the Bronx have two Shaqs. I don't think there's another team out there with two Shaqs. Double your Shaq attack. I think that's a great piece of trivia. Now you decide which piece of trivia you like better. The fact that the Bronx are probably the only team in the nation with two Shaqs, or did you know? Curly Johnson of Clewiston, Florida. In his free time, you know, when he's home, vacation or something, summer vacation probably. You know, he wrestles out alligators. It has been suggested that we follow Johnson on an alligator wrestling expedition for Bronx Country. I don't know about you, but I'm not going. I mean, if somebody else wants to hold the camera and, and be be near the alligator, that, that's their business. But I, I, my hat's off to Johnson for doing that. I couldn't do that. Twelve point lead for the Bronx, nine and a half to play in the second. Six days to tip off. You've been following the countdown on the UTPA Bronx Instagram account. If you haven't, you should be. We're featuring players from throughout the years. Just a few to go from both men's and women's basketball. A lot of credit to Danny Elizondo and Sarah Hernandez for putting together the photos finding the photos and putting together some notes about them. Thomas Diaz travels. Bronx, Bronx ball. Juski left wing, Farrell at the top, finds Hines, turnaround jumper, swish, 18 points, Shaquille Hines, 57-43. Hines last year during the regular season, his career high was 10 points. Now, while this won't count towards his career high, because it's an exhibition game, I think that tells you a little something about what we might be seeing from Hines this year as a sophomore. Hines averaged four points per game last year, 15 minutes. He's well above his last year's season averages today. Hopefully a sign of things to come for Bronx fans and for Hines. Bronx by 14 with 8.18 to go. Diaz just fouled out. Eight fouls on Kingsville. In for the Adelines, number 14, Robert Powell, and number 11, Adonis Bailey. Bailey and Powell in. Garcia takes a seat. And you already know Diaz is out. Lori Toivin into the line. First trip today, and the first one is nothing but net. The Bronx now 21 for 28 from the line today. Lori Toivin in. So even in last season, 67% free throw shooter. Now when he came back to campus, he really had a great answer for, hey, what'd you do on your summer vacation? You can call it a vacation. He went to Russia, where he participated with the Finnish national team in the World University Games. Well, they won a few games. Farrell with the steal. Farrell to the hoop. Slams it in. Bronx lead is 18. It's their largest of the game. Underneath, that's Evans. Number 
And a foul on Toivonen. That's his fifth. So Latte just fouled out. And we hit a media timeout. 7.43 to go. Bronx 61-43 leaders. This is Bronx Basketball. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the Texas Pan American Bronx. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. 7.43 to go. It's 61-43 Bronx. 18 points for Lori Toivonen. and then 9 for Javon Farrell. 8 for Alex Majewski to lead the way. Evans in the line for the Javelinas. And he just scored his first point of the game. Doesn't really fill the stat sheet. Only has one block, but really made an impact defensively early. He's got four fouls. Early Johnson in. LJ McIntosh takes a seat. Evans. Free throw. Good. Little zone defense for the Havelinas. 16 point Bronx edge. Farrell, Hines in the left corner. Farrell at the top, comes inside, puts it up off the front iron, rebound tipped, pulled in by Bailey. Now battle for it on the floor, Farrell grabs it, fires to Johnson, down low looking for Hines, out of his reach, out of bounds. Havelinas basketball. Bailey, goes to Basie, Basie to his right, gets doubled, now to the top, Scott, pass, knocked away, Johnson's got it, feeds it head to Farrell, to the hoop, whoa, reverse jam! But Farrell's got some moves, huh? And he's in double figures, 11 points for the graduate student. Scott has the basketball for Kingsville. And a basey. A whistle and a one and one coming. It's foul number seven on the Bronx. Hurley Johnson picks up number one. Shaquille Boga and Javon Farrell takes a seat. Basic. First trip to the line today. The Avalinas are 6 for 17, make it 6 for 18. Check that. That's from behind the arc. They're now 7 for 15 from the line. 
That's still below 50%. Boga, high to the top. Right corner, Majewski, quick trigger three, too strong. Rebound goes out of bounds and seems to go out of Basie's hands, but I guess it was pushed out by Boga. So it's Kingsville basketball. Scott. Basie, jumper, too strong. Rebound Majewski. <laughs> really, Johnson loses a shoe. Boga slowly brings it up the court. And he'll wait. Now Johnson's ready to go. And the Frogs will call for a 30-second timeout. 5.43 to play in the second half. The Frogs up 63-45. to Frogs are going to open up the regular season in six days. Take on Sam Houston State at the UTPA field now, 7 o'clock. Part of a single admission doubleheader with the women's basketball team. The women face Shriner at 5 p.m. on Friday. Only doubleheader of the season between these two teams. All the rest of the games will be single day. Start of a three-game homestand for the Broads. So host the University of Houston on Monday, November 11th at 7 p.m. And then Houston Dillardson. Wednesday, November 6th at 6 p.m. Houston Tillotson game is a part of the Corpus Christi tournament. The Bronx will be taking part in right afterwards up in Corpus. After that, the Bronx aren't home again until December 7th. So take advantage of these home games while you can, folks. Then after that game, it's December 29th and January 9th. So early home dates. Bronx fans should be here. Tickets and more information, go to utpabronx.com. You know, season tickets for men's basketball start just 75 bucks. You can buy them online. You can buy them while you are watching this game. You should. We take credit. You can get cash back. Haven't you seen the commercials? The things you can do with cash back and awards points and things like that? I mean, everybody loves cash back. Well, almost everybody, right? Hurley Johnson picks up his second foul. That's eight on the Bronx. Ronald Scott to the line for the Javelinas. Three for seven, make it four for eight from the line. The Javelinas now eight for 16, right at 50%. Second shot, no good, and here comes UTPA. Boga, finds Leathers, lays it up, and in, uncontested. Bronx lead is 19, that's their largest of the game. And here comes Kingsville. A little backcourt pressure applied by Boga. Johnson was back there too, he drops back. Turnover. Here come the boys in white. Boga good and the foul. Bogo will try to convert on three-point play. The Bronx now have a 21-point advantage. It's their largest of the game. Hines, Majewski take a seat. Dantzler, Christian Hildebrand are in. Mo McDonald's in. Three of them with Leathers and Boga. Basie racing down, a steal. Leathers, head to Boga, one-on-one, -on -one and it's swatted into the Bronx bench by Daly. Bronx retained with 30 on the shot clock. 439 game clock. It's a 22-point game. 
Bogut at the top thought about it, comes inside instead, dishes off to Leathers! One hand, slam! 70-46! Scott crossing the timeline. Scott being forced out by Boga. Jacob versus Popovich getting ready to check in. And offensive foul. It's Bronx basketball. 4-10 to go. Versus Popovich replaces Boga. Popovich, left wing, Hildebrand. Up top to Leathers, to his right to Dantzler. Now the right wing versus Popovich. Top of the key, Leathers for three. Too strong. Rebound, Havelinas. Scott. Right wing, Basie. Basie, hop, skip, and a shot is good. 70 to 48. Hildebrand running inside, layup, no good but a foul. Hildebrand to the line when we return. 3.33 to play, make a wish, Bronx by 22. This is Bronx Basketball. Dr. Pena, LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put them somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Rolito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. Commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Christian Hildebrandt makes the first. Crocs lead is 23. Hildebrandt. Off the front iron. Tried to get his own rebound. Whistle and it's coming the other way. Bronx 24 for 33 from the line. 73% today. Three and a half minutes to go. Rashad Basie along the baseline, pass underneath and kicked out by Hildebrand. Remains Kingsville basketball. 3.13 to go. The UTPA volleyball opens up against Idaho in about five minutes. When this game is over, make sure you tune in to the Idaho webcast. Big whack contest for UTPA. Rashad Basie nails the three and the Bronx lead is cut to 20. Link is up on utpabronx.com. 
There's Popovich with the basketball at the top. Pass to his left to Hildebrandt. Right wing Dantzler. Right corner is Popovich. Now the left wing McDonald. Down to Hildebrandt. Leathers at the baseline. Left wing McDonald. Up top Dantzler for three. Short. Rebound McDonald. And his three. No good. Rebound Leathers is shot. No good. This time the Havelinas control the rebound. Make sure you stay tuned after the game. Coach Hipsher will join us for our post-game interview. Powell misses. Whistle blown. Foul on the floor. One and one coming up. Christian Hildebrand from St. Louis, Missouri. It's called for the foul. His third. Bronx have nine. Marcel Simon waiting to check in for the Bronx. My guess is he'll replace Leathers. First shot is good. Marcel Simon in. Leathers takes a seat. Substitution for the Bronx. Number 33, Marcel Simon replaces number 32, Justin Leathers. Leathers gets high fives as he returns to the bench. Two minutes to go. Bronx by 18. McDonald fouled as he goes up for the hoop. Well, they'll call it offensive. And it, I mean, it, he, had a, he had position established. That's a good call. So Garcia will inbound stage right of the basket. We'll talk with Coach Hipster. We'll give you the final numbers. And we'll look ahead to the Bronx game against Sam Houston State, which is just six days away. Scott, Garcia, no good, Hildebrand the rebound, goes for Spopovich, lets the traffic pass by, goes to the left wing McDonald, top of the key, Spopovich, no look, right wing, Hildebrand for three, no good, rebound Basie, basket and a foul for Bailey, And the Bronx lead has cut to 16. Minute 20 to go. And make sure you check out utpabronx.com after the game. We'll, we'll have a short form version of the highlights, as we usually do up on our website. Long form version will be available on Bronx Country in a couple of days. You'll also be able to see interviews with Coach Hipcher and a few of the players. Say so after a night like this, we'll definitely talk to Shaquille Hines. Maybe one or two other players as well. Hildebrand lobs it into Dantzler. Turn around, jumper, no good. Rebound, tipped around, pulled in by the Havelinas with under a minute to go. Garcia misses on the three, rebound Powell misses as well. This time the rebound Hildebrand with 44 seconds to go. Simon's got it left wing. Pass to Hildebrand, top of the key, McDonald. Right wing was Popovich. Right corner, Simon, now to Hildebrand, back to Simon, launches the three. Got it! 74 56, Brogs. High is the lead. And 18 seconds remain. UTPA pep band chanting start the bus and jingling their keys from the stands. Shot clock off. Bailey misses. Simon rebounds, gives it to Popovich, and this game is over. This one belongs to the Bronx. A 74-56 victory 
for the University of Texas Pet American Bronx over the Texas A&M Kingsville Javelinas. So the Bronx take their lone exhibition game of the season. Have a move on to face Sam Houston State at the start of the regular season. On Friday at 7 o'clock. Well. The Bronx got a lot of points from their starters. 51 points from the starting five today. Including 18 from Shaquille Hines, 11 from Javon Farrell, 10 from Justin Leathers, 6 from Josh Cleveland, 2 from Hurley Johnson to round it out. That doesn't add up right. That's 47. Well, the stats aren't always perfect. <laughs> but however you slice it, the Bronx come up with a win. We'll take a look at some of the numbers. We'll start with Texas A&M Kingsville. Coach Hipster's heading back to the locker room with his team. He said he told me before the game he's going to talk to them for about five minutes, and then he's going to come back out and join us. So as soon as he does, we'll plug his headset in and we'll bring him on. In the meantime, Havelina's led by Rashad Basie, 24 points, 10 of 16 shooting, 4 for 4 from behind the arc. Two assists, a block, four rebounds. 11 points. For Ronald Scott on three of eight shooting, one for four from behind the arc, four for nine from the line, six assists, six rebounds. Eight points for Adonis Bailey on two of 11 shooting, one for two from behind the arc, three for three from the line, had eight rebounds though, and three blocks. Four points for Ryan Garcia, four points, 11 rebounds for Robert Powell. Three points for Thomas Diaz. Two for Mike Evans. Havelinas shot 34% from the field, 19 for 56. They were seven of 19 from behind the arc, that's 37%. 11 for 20 from the line, that's 55%. Points in the paint, well, I don't know if I trust that. Points off turnovers, four, second chance points, eight. Bench points, eight points for Kingsville. And then 51 points. Well, don't trust that number. The Bronx, on the other hand, led by Shaquille Hines, what would be a career-high 18 points if this was a regular season game. Six of 11 shooting, two for four from behind the arc, four for six from the line, with eight rebounds, two assists, and a steal. 11 points for Javon Farrell on three of seven shooting. Five for six from the line, two assists, two steals, two rebounds. Ten points, Justin Leathers, four of 12 shooting, two for two from the line. Eight rebounds, two steals. Six points for Josh Cleveland, one of four shooting, four for six from the line, four rebounds. Eight points for Alex Majewski, three of seven shooting, one for four from behind the arc, one for three from the line with four boards. Five points for Jamal Dantzler, two of five shooting, two boards. Four points for Lori Latte Toivonen. Three for Marcel Simon. Two each, Hurley Johnson, Blake Provost. And one for Christian Hildebrandt. The Bronx shot 23 for 61 from the field. That's 73%. Check that. That's 38%. Four for 19 from behind the arc, 21%. 24 for 33 from the line. Now that's 73%. 21 points off of turnovers, 13 second chance points, and 27 points from the bench. In the battle of rebounds, the Bronx led 46-39. They committed fewer turnovers, 22 for Kingsville, 15 for the Bronx. There were five lead changes and, or six, that's six lead changes, three lead changes and five ties. Bronx's largest lead was 24. Avelina's largest lead was two. I'll give you all these numbers, but the only ones that matter. 74 to 56, the UTPA Bronx defeat the Texas A&M Kingsville Avelinas 
here at the UTPA Fieldhouse in an exhibition game just before the kickoff of the 2013 season. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll chat with Bronx head coach Dan Hipsher. This is Bronx Basketball. Being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital at Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Buick GMC dealer, South Texas Buick GMC. Come test drive the all-new 2014 GMC Sierra and drive it home for just $3.99 a month. South Texas Buick GMC. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put them somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Rolito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Got to make room. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you on Bronx post game. Bronx, 74-60. 74-56 winners over Texas A&M Kingsville in an exhibition game to open up the well, really, to say open up but the only game of the 2013 preseason. We're now joined by well, we'll be joined by Bronx head coach Dan Hipsher in a minute. He wants to go say thank you to Dr. Nelson for coming to the game first. So we'll be joined by him in just a second. Now we're joined by Bronx head coach Dan Hipsher. And, uh, coach, your thoughts on uh, this uh, exhibition vict victory? Well, typical. You know, I, I, you get a little upset. You want your guys to be season ready right away. But th th this is what we're going to be doing in these first six or seven games is, you know, trying to learn how to play and learn what our roles are and learn what's going on. So uh, it takes a little time but uh, and a little patience. But uh, a lot of nervous missed layups. <laughs> Uh, and, and really bad transition defense. Well, uh, Shaquille Hines, 18 points. Uh, his career high last year was 10 points in a game, and he had 18 points, I think, in the first seven minutes or something like that, and uh, it, he really seemed to want to attack today. Well, he's been a, a really good player. He's really bought into the movement, and, you know, he's the kind of guy that can score inside, outside, score off screening, screen himself and get into position, so... You know, he's a he, he's really a nice offensive player, and, and we're going to use him in a lot of different ways, and, and he has really bought into the motion and doing a good job in it. And you were able to go out and get uh, 
all 14 of your players uh, into this game at different points, and everybody uh, got a few minutes. There's some a few more minutes than uh, w we probably needed to, but we couldn't keep a five-man in the game, Jonah, that wasn't in <laughs> foul trouble. But we've been harping on that. It's not the referee's fault in the fact that they're going to call the hand check in any, any of that. I talked to a guy who had an exhibition game the other day, and their team shot 45 free throws, and the other team shot 42. So it's an emphasis, and, and we've got to get prepared for it. Uh, one thing that uh, really brought the crowd to their feet a little bit, uh, Javon Farrell in the second half uh, got airborne a few times with some uh, very uh, acrobatic dunks would be the way to put it. <laughs> yeah, he can get out there and get it done when, he, when he's going. And he, you know what? He gave us a good, uh, again, a veteran out there that kind of made good decisions and good plays tonight. He got us into offense, got cutting, got moving, and uh, did a pretty good job and, and made good decisions uh, what happens a lot of times early in the year in motion is you just start standing around and ball watching because you're nervous. But uh, Javon, I thought, did a good job of continuing to move. Well, Coach, uh, congratulations on picking up the win, and uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Jonah. That was Bronx head coach Dan Hipshire. Bronx pick up a 74-56 victory over the Javelinas in their lone exhibition game of the year. The Bronx back in action against Sam Houston State. On Friday at 7-ish, women play Shriner at 5, so about half an hour after that game ends, the men will play Sam Houston State. So that is a 7 o'clock start. We'll already be on the air. We won't go off the air in between games, I don't think. We'll see. But if we do, then we'll be on the air about 10 minutes before the start of the game. So however you slice it, we'll be on the air with you here on 956sports.com. But uh, I'd like to wrap it up, so thank everybody out there for tuning in. This has been a presentation of Bronx Basketball. For more information, you can log on to utpabronx.com. If you'd ever like to reach us, send an email. Our contact information is up on the website under Inside Athletics. Click on Staff Directory. But for now, for my producer engineer on site, Dylan Bedura, the people back in the control room, Jim Bob Sides, and Romeo Villarreal, who apparently have forgotten that we have a post-game show. I apologize for the the lack of camera right now. But here's what I'll do. Hi, everybody. So for all of them, our camera crew, and, of course, Jack Fallow, wherever you are, this is Jonah Goldberg saying good night from the UTPA Fieldhouse. Bronx win, 74-56.